Good morning. Hi, it's Gail coming to you live from Briargate Pond. I hope you're enjoying your day so far. I talk about got blizzard because that's what we got. We've had a blizzard <clears throat> show up, um, let's see, Monday night, Sunday night, something like that it started. Anyway, I want to talk to you about blizzards because there's different kinds of blizzards. And what's really funny <clears throat> with this particular blizzard, we went out Sunday to fill our cupboards because it was pretty bare. And oh my goodness, there were people just flooding the stores. The Walmart, were, there was lines like it was Christmas time. There was lines coming into Walmart. We thought we'd gotten there at a good time. We were leaving like at noon. Everybody must have been coming right straight from church because that low, I've never seen anything like it except at Christmas time. Go over to our local grocery store where we know the manager there and lo and behold um, he said it took him four hours the day before to get to his store. He's 45 minutes away and then he sort of chuckles. He's okay okay I have to admit it we spent some of that time in the ditch but they were so concerned about the storm coming in that they had booked themselves in at the hotel across the way so they wouldn't have to make that horrendous drive the next day because we were under blizzard warnings. His store was the same way as Walmart. Just packed the max. The stuff was flying off the shelves. I mean, literally. I have never seen anything like this. Shelves were just bare really fast. He had 50 pounds of ice melt come in and he had already sold them that morning and he was just praying that he'd get another another delivery yesterday morning. Well, our storm didn't hit till yesterday afternoon it started coming down. So people were getting these blizzard warnings and they were preparing for the worst. So they were buying food and they were also stopping at the family video or you saw them buying videos. They were getting ready to settle in if that blizzard showed up. And so, sure enough, it did. Right now, we are completely, all the schools are closed. Um, they've been closed, this is two days this week. They were closed three days last week. Um, so, everybody is taking the time to do something we don't do very often. We are pausing. We may have our iPhones out, we may have the iPads out, we may have the computer on, but we don't have all that other commotion going on right now. The frantic pace of going here, there, meetings, you name it, has slowed down. Because you can't go anywhere if nothing's open. So what happens in a blizzard, and believe me, I've lived through many of them, people will gather around the fireplace, they'll make the popcorn, the hot chocolate, they'll curl, curl up together on the couch with their blankets and their pets, and they'll all cuddle up and watch a movie and just take advantage of this wonderful quiet time. And they love it. It's wonderful. It's a way to connect. It's a way to stop having to do the homework. It's stop having to rush off to the job. It's, it's so, it's a peacefulness. It's, a, it's an amazing, quiet time. And I can look out my window here and it looks very quiet and very peaceful because you have to understand, I don't go outside of this stuff. It's cold and I see no reason to get dressed up to go outside to be cold. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's not something I enjoy doing. So I watch it from the, out, the inside out. And as I watch it, I see a few cars go by. My husband barely made it out of our cul-de-sac this morning. So, oh darn, I had to cancel a training appointment I had today. They didn't answer their phone. I'm pretty sure they're not in because I know where they live. Speaking of where they live, a lot of uh, states are slammed right now. There are serious highways shut down. Um, they've had accidents. They've had semis turn over. They've had ambulances stuck and fire uh, engine stuck and so it's it's just it just brings the world to a halt it just it's like stopping and and you're now in slow motion well that's awesome and that is an absolutely incredible way to spend your time in a blizzard i'm doing something a little different my husband's gone to work and i have a blizzard 
inside. But it's a blizzard of activity. And so it's, it's exciting to me because I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to respond to the outside world. I can focus on what I consider more of a priority for me at this time. And so I engage in income producing activities because I started doing something that has engaged my brain, stimulated my creativity, and I have become a whirlwind of activity. Now let me roll back the clock a ways. I haven't been this way for a long, long time. I used to be like this when I got into advertising. When I got into advertising, it was so new, it was so exciting that I just, I just ate it up. I lived, ate, and breathed it. I eventually was responsible for three publications every month. I did the Chamber Bulletin, I did the um, Plattsburgh Alive, and I did my own magazine called Strictly Business. And back then, everything was cut and paste. I would go out and I would sell the ads, then I create the ads, and then I cut them out and I lay out the magazine by hand. Ah! Oh, I loved it. I would go in on Saturday. And we have these great big, I mean great big advertising books. They're called clip art. And I would just go through them for hours and I'd find the perfect ad for my client and I'd set it aside for the next ad. And then I'd create that ad. And then one of the publications had this service directory. And I had like a hundred little tiny ads that I would just create and introduce around them. And I, oh, I just had so much fun. And people called me the golden girl of advertising because I was so passionate and so in love with it. And they said, if Gail walks you through your door, you better watch out. You're going to be buying something from that girl. And what was my something? It was an advertising spot. And I absolutely thrived on it. Well, then I got into Timeshare. And when I got into Timeshare, the creativity was still there, but in a very different way. Instead of it being a print media, it was a mouth media. It was me. I spent all day every day telling stories. Some were my stories, some were stories of the resorts, you name it, but I spent telling stories first in the Blue Ridge Mountain Range and then in Williamsburg, Virginia. And every day, every day was a different story because I had different people in my car. One day the story might be about families because I'd have a family in my car. Another day it might be about the couple that I sold timeshare to that they were going to take their their honeymoon, their 40 and 45 first marriage, and they were going to take their honeymoon to Hawaii. And so I asked them, how many honeymoons are you going to take? One. Well, what if you could take a honeymoon every year? That money you're putting into Hawaii, take half of that and buy yourself a timeshare and you can go every year. So that story I shared with couples. So it was just invigorating because I always had to come up with new stories and they weren't hard. It was just experience. It was just what was going on in my life and who I was meeting and who I was hanging out with. And it was fabulous. I was hanging out with some major players in this business that had been in the business for a long time. And I learned so much from them. And it was fun and it was exciting. And then my kids got transferred here. And I decided to leave that world behind and come be with my kids. Okay, there's no resorts here. So, hmm, what do I do? Do I reinvent myself? Well, roll back into what I knew. Advertising. So, I won't go into that story right now because it's, uh, it's many different paths, but I ended up working for different uh, advertising venues here, having great success, but I was so bored. I, it was no longer about creating the ads. I would sell the ads and then I'd have to send it to a graphic designer to create the ad. I didn't get to lay out the magazine anymore because they had somebody else that did that by computer. So technology took that creativity away from me. And so it was just, I was stagnant. I was just like, oh my, I just, I couldn't get excited. And then the last one that I sold advertising for was even more of a struggle because I knew it would work. It was advertorial. 
and that's very much how my Strictly Business magazine is. I would sell half page ad, you took a half page ad, you got a half a page of profile on the same page. The stories about the businesses, the people behind the business cards, that's what sold. That's what brought them clients. People want to know who they're doing business with. So I got into this advertorial company here, and the only thing I was allowed to do was go sell space. I would go tell, sell people on getting into the publication, why it would work for them, make sure they had plenty of uh, goods to sell or time for the services because I knew they were going to get tons of, of business. And then the publisher of the magazine would go interview them and write the story. And he had a very set style. Well, I had some women that really didn't like him. Even though he was raised with five women, he was married to a remarkable woman and had um, children. He just had this little mm, bit of it of chauvinistic ego type attitude, and he would turn women off. So I was always asked that, you know, could you write the story for me? Wow, that was so awesome because I used to write stories for my magazine back in upstate New York. So, oh my goodness, yes, 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 yes. So I'd write the story, and that was the only, that was one of the conditions, the only way they'd advertise is if I wrote the story. So I told them this. So I'd send in the story. Whew, they'd slap my fingers. Gail, that's not our style. And I got really mad one day. And I said, well, just maybe you need to stay, change your style after 13 years. I mean, I, I would think it was a menopausal rage. I don't know. But it was not a nice thing to do. And so I soon, very quickly, understood I was frustrated. I was bored. I had to move on. And I did, and I tried to find the same excitement I'd had when I first got into advertising, when I first got in timeshare, and I struggled. I looked, couldn't find it, then I found the business that I've currently been in for a while. And once again, stimulated, excited, I had creativity, I, had, I was hanging out with leaders, I was having a great time. And then I got stuck. Why did I get stuck? Because I got bored again. I don't know about you, but I'm not a good routine person. I can't even keep up in aerobics because the routine is like... <sighs> so, I know this about me. And I also know that when I get there, I'm always trying to find a way to get out of it. Is there a better way to do this business? Is there a better way for me to attract people into my life that would want to do this business? So, I did you name it, all the time, trying to find different ways to accomplish that. Well, just 30, 45, 45 days ago, I had set down my game plan and my business plan and figured out different things that I wanted to do to get that done. And so, as much as I wrote it down, guess what? My activity had not changed a whole lot. Here was my activity. I would get up. I would go downstairs, I would do my treadmill, I'd do my hula hoop, maybe I'd do a little ping pong practice, come up, take my shower, get dressed, eat breakfast, come in to my home office, sit down at my computer, and even though I knew better and had studied experts that told me this, I started with my emails. I'm going to give myself an hour to do my emails, answer them, respond, you name it, whatever it takes. And so, there I go, an hour. So, about three hours later, I look up, I'm like, whoa, what the heck? <sighs> well, I had to answer those emails. I just I just had to answer them. And it seems like I never do a quick answer. It's like, all it goes on and on and on. So, well, okay, well, I didn't do that exactly right, but that's okay. It's lunchtime. I'll go have lunch, and then from 2 to 4, I'll I'll make my phone calls. So, mm, get done with lunch about 1. Well, I'm going to do my phone calls at 2 to 4, so I'm not going to mess with that right now. So, I'm going to go check and see what's, what's going on, on Facebook. Who's hanging out on Facebook? Oh, wow. Look at that cool picture. I love that. Okay, I got a comment on that. Well, wow. Okay, do I want to go to events? Do I need to register for this event? I look up. It's 2.30, 45. Whoops. Missed. Oh, okay, well, I still got, I got, I got time. So I go into my contact manager and I pull up my, my follow-ups that I need to make and I make the calls and I might get 
you know, a voice here or there, left a lot of voice messages. Oh, I set an appointment. That's exciting. Or I might, you know, I already have on my schedule a presentation that I can do over the phone. I don't even have to leave here. Or I can meet someone in person in a coffee shop, and I'm fun. It's fun. I love doing presentations. And then a little bit of training, and you name it. And then, okay, it's 5 o'clock. My husband's home. Hmm, time to fix dinner. Okay, fix dinner. Okay, uh, honey, sweetheart, I got to go uh, and check out some things on the computer. And I start internet surfing. And, oh, wow, it's 8 o'clock. I need to go sit on the couch and um, enjoy my husband's company because he goes to bed really early. That was my day. There was no energy. I thought exercising and all this stuff would bring energy into me. But you know what I discovered? My energy isn't necessarily stimulated by exercise. You know what my energy is stimulated by? Using this. When I engaged in this Empower Network blogging system, it has already literally changed my life in 30 days. I know you're going, what? Well, here's the difference of what my behavior is now. You know, I've, I've always set goals in the air. I've never written them down. Even now, I had bought one of the things that I had purchased was Best Year Ever, Best, Your Best Year Ever, something like that, by Darren Harding. Living Your Best Year Ever, that's it, by Darren Harding. Okay, I've listened to CDs several times. I love listening to him. He's very profound. He's very, very good. I love what he has to say. And I believe everything he has to say. And I'm putting that into my life in bits and pieces. But with this Living Your Best Year Ever comes an incredible journal. This is my journal right now. Okay, why am I not using the beautiful leather-bound journal I got with this purchase? Because you were supposed to set your goals down and your intentions and your activity on January 1. I was still reading it. I didn't put anything down. I know now what my real goals are. I know what my real intentions are. And now I know what my income producing activities are. And that's what I did not really fully engage in before. So on March 1st, I will start that book. So my best year will be just from March 1st to March 1st. No big whoop de doo But what's funny is I had to really take a good look at myself in the mirror and figure out what was my real problem with stimulating my other business. I still love that business. I still work that business. But I got bored because it was the same old, same old, same old, even though I was constantly purchasing new books, purchasing new things, always looking intently for that magic whatever, magic bullet to re-energize my passion and my emotions and my enthusiasm. Well, you know what? I'm there now. Now here's the difference. I get up. I exercise. I got a notepad on my treadmill so that when the ideas come to me that I need to share with you, I can write them down. When card verses come to me, I can write them down. It has absolutely set me on fire. That's why my, <laughs> my ringtone is girl on fire because I am. I do my exercises. I come upstairs. I write some more notes down. I get in the shower. I'm thinking about more things. You know what happens when your brain gets engaged and you're always thinking of new and creative things? You forget to do simple things like put your body lotion on or put your makeup on because you're off over here thinking about the next great thing you want to say or do. It is amazing and it is energizing. So in this blizzard, I am doing something entirely different. I am doing my blogging, I'm doing my video, I'm doing my posting. I want to get this blog out to everybody I know. Why? Because I know what it can do for you. And it doesn't matter what you're doing right now. But think about this. If you are sitting on the couch every evening for hours at a time, 
feeding yourself with other people's success stories and yet you hate your job or you just are bored with your life, why not find something to re-energize you, to bring a passion to your life? Because here's what I truly believe. I truly believe if each and every one of us loved what we did, we were passionate about it, and we were engaged in sharing it with others, whether they joined us in that activity or not, doesn't matter, but by you simply touching someone else with your enthusiasm and your energy, we can change this world. We can bring people out of this awful funk that they're in and make an incredible difference. We start with one life at a time, but it's a dominoes effect. You touch that life and that life touches another life and another life and another life and another life. That's our mission. And if somebody had told me what I'm telling you right now, I would have gone, get real. Blogging is going to change my life? Are you nuts? You know, I tend to listen to my friends. And I know years ago when I tried to do blogging, I did not have the same environment of people that I have now. It really truly is who you're hanging out with. If they're excited and they're enthusiastic and they're passionate about what they're doing, you can't help but feel that. It's like a blood transfusion. It's like, oh my goodness, wow. So my blizzard of activity has now come full circle to going from bored to, oh my goodness, I can't hardly sleep. But here's what's so wild. Here's, here's what just blows my mind. I am falling asleep every night on the couch. Me, who has had trouble sleeping, I'm falling asleep on the couch every night because I am putting so much energy into everything. But I'm waking up earlier because my brain's going, I got more stuff to tell you. It, it is just beyond, beyond, beyond. So with that said, I had another, I, I read, I, this is a redo, uh, a do over because I did a really incredible uh, video before this one, had a lot more stuff in it. But for some reason, I did not really fully engage the on bus button. So what I'm saying to you now is make sure you press your on button to full engagement because you know what? I'm telling you. I am telling you. I am singing. I haven't sang in years because I'm tone deaf. I'm not supposed to do it in public, but I can do it at home. I'm whistling. I am I am just I, I am just full of incredible vibrancy, my my energy, my Everything. I am literally attracting happy, energetically, well-connected leaders into my business because that's what our business really is truly about. Creating leaders, creating people that will step up and make a decision to have a different life, to get off the couch, to stop being bored, to stop engaging in other people's successes and become a success themselves. Is that you? Are you tired of crap? Are you tired of of watching other people control your life. People telling you, I don't care if all the schools are closed and all the businesses are closed, you will come into work today. Take your life into your hands and risk it for this $9.85 an hour business. Come on in. It's been a long time since I ever risked my life for a job. I absolutely refused. When the roads got really bad, if my employer said you have to come in, I would flat out tell them, sorry, I'm not driving in this weather. Count me out. I'm not coming. There is no amount of money that's going to be taking my life by endangering it. But if I can find a way to enlighten people, to encourage people, to engage people in the very best they have, that's what I'll risk. I'll risk sending out goofy videos. I'll risk standing on my deck in one degree temperatures to take a picture of the snow. I will risk maybe challenging you. But 
risking my life? Mm -mm. I got a big message to share, and I'm here to share it with you. So what I want to say to you is if you're doing a blizzard of activity, awesome. If you're sitting on the couch, curled up with your family, here's what I want to share with you. Get ready. Because when the blizzard's over, you got to go back to the same stuff. If you're passionate and in love with it and you're ready to go, awesome. But if you sit there tonight on the couch and you're going, oh, i got to go to work tomorrow. i got to get the kids to play practice. I gotta go buy that birthday present. Oh my god, I got that meeting. Oh my goodness, I'm an event planner and I gotta reschedule that event. All of a sudden, you have this weight of the world back on your shoulders. Everybody that's missed two days, four days, you're backed up. Homework's gonna be piled on. Jobs are gonna have stuff piled up. You're gonna be stressed. It happens. It's, it's our world. Do you have a way to release your stress? Sitting down for 20 minutes after the kids are in bed, after your world's set up, sitting down for just 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, and putting out a blog. A blog about how stressed you are relieves your stress. A blog about how uh, fun it was to take your kids to soccer practice and watch them play. A blog about how you sewed an item today that you've been ch challenging with. And you blog about anything. Photographers love to blog about their blogging techniques. I share this with you too because my husband, who's going through, as anybody who's been following me knows, he's leaving a company he's been with for 33 years, not by choice, but because they're moving out. He has an incredible creativity within him. And I've encouraged him to do what I do. Be creative. Tap into it. We have a little book sitting on our coffee table. Kurt's Creativity. He's picking up that book every night. And he's jotting down little ideas. He is a far happier man than before he started doing that. He's getting through this layoff in a whole different mindset than he might have had he not embraced something new and exciting. So with that said... I want to share with you, it's, uh, I keep saying I want to share with you. I want to <laughs> ask you just to do me one more favor. Pass on that smile, you know, because it is contagious. And I really appreciate you doing that because that one smile, that one touch can make such a difference in someone's life. It sounds like a little thing, but it might be the only smile they get that day. It might be the only encouragement they get from anybody in their life because we do not know where someone is sitting who needs that message from us. Be the messenger. Brighten someone's day. I'm sharing my smile with you. Take care. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.